And we are back. Gotta love live podcasting. And the interesting thing is I said, hey, guys, if uh, something happens, it's because my power went out. Now, for those of you seeing the live feed I did for my phone, um, it takes two computers to get this bad boy up on off the ground. And my computer that I'm sitting at and uh, that everything runs off of the Internet is on the UPS. And the computer which live streams... And, and does the Skype is on the UPS, but the battery's bad. And so when the power went out, my computer, the internet, and everything on the right-hand side of the room stayed up, and the left-hand side of the room went down. So luckily, we, we didn't lose the recording, which is a good thing. Uh, we just had a little interruption in our live stream, but we're back. But anyhow, as I was saying, he has those eyelets on the... Uh, and you traverse across that, and that was fun. But here's the thing uh, that I really found my nemesis on it has nothing to do with upper body he has what they call a um oh it's basically it's like a 30 actually like a 100 foot ratchet strap and it's four okay. inches long well i mean four inches wide and he has a wrap between two trees and it's about a foot and a half off the ground and you got to walk across it yeah slack line yeah slack basically. line and so i got up on it and made two steps fell off made two steps fell off and i was like this thing is a good metaphor for life really because anytime you do anything the first time you're not going to succeed at it and, and think about it though you're six five ish 225 five two ish person is going to make that be a lot easier for yeah because i'm top heavy but but i but i'm like you know it's a good metaphor because how many times have you taught somebody to snowboard or to skateboard or whatever and yeah, they get a little disenchanted saying, I can't do this, it's too hard. And, you know, and, and of course they're going to say that because they're writing or doing whatever with somebody who's been doing it for years and is proficient at it, who makes it look quote-unquote easy. And you can try and explain to them, no one gets good at anything the first time they try it. And now so, you're going to get beat up. Yeah, and you're going to get beat up. Long story short, I, I would test this thing out and try to get further and further, and then I would go do some hand stuff. By the time I finished today, I made it out about... 20 yards mm -hmm. but as it made it out the thing gets closer and closer to the ground well, which makes it even harder so now he's going like this but going down but that's my I, my goal is to get to conquer this damn thing and the only thing i noticed is when i watch you on it and some of the stuff I'm like this thing is definitely not made for a six foot five no guy. it's not <laughs> but carrie and i said that to carrie said i'm a little too tall for it. she's like yeah but if you watch american ninja warrior a lot of that stuff's low because the rule is if your feet touch the water you're out so mm -hmm. maybe he that did that intentionally forcing him to get from get more comfortable doing these things with your legs bent and basically kicking yourself in the ass with your feet maybe he did that intentionally that and he didn't want to build Couldn't a 40 foot well. structure i mean the, the damn thing's pretty tall he does have the salmon ladder which i i can't even get up one run because well i can't do pull-ups so, I mean, with the salmon ladder post, it's pretty damn high. But, yeah, there, there are definitely are some low spots on it. But, yeah, so that's my, my, my goal is to accomplish this slack line. And that's not easy. You know, it's you see a t uh, tightrope walkers. That thing's tight. It doesn't move. Slack line. <laughs> so it's all. And twice I came off of it, and the thing came up and, like, scra scraped along the edge of my leg. So that was very uncomfortable. But, yeah, that's my. That's part of my training regiment for the Savage Race. Obviously, I have no delusions of grandeur thing. I'm ever going to do American Ninja Warrior, but the reason I do it is to practice on my grip so that I can do Savage Races. And because you and your wife got me watching goddamn the world's hardest race, the world's most dangerous race, the mo world's most impossible race. Yeah, I was like, I was working out one day watching it. I just popped up on Prime. I was like, yeah, maybe this will give a motivation. I was like, oh, this is right up Bond's alley. <sighs> we watched every episode in three days. I'm done with it already. No, I, I just watch only when I'm working out. And I came home the next day and Carrie's like, you know, I was Googling adventure races. I was like, well, I was thinking about doing that too. They have one from Miami to Key West. It's the only problem miles. I see is the money that it's going to take to get bikes and everything else. Well, this one, they rent kayaks and bikes. Okay. This is an amateur art one. But in, when it comes to that sort of thing, these guys are pros and they get sponsorships and all that. And that's kind of what I told her. I was like, we need to find one that's like a year out. And we got to do savage races and Spartan races and get ourselves 
more condition for this thing. And, and if the, you're going to rent one, you're going to have to find one with a frame for your size. Mm -hmm. that, that'll yeah. be interesting. And I'm going to have to have I'm going to have to borrow kayaks in the training season because it's it's a uh, you ride like 30 miles and there's a kayak and then you got to run. So it's it I was wondering if this was going to put a, a, a another bug in your guys' ear. Yeah, it, it definitely did. And and, and when actually it was funny cuz I ordered this virtual race um medal a few weeks back it's a starbucks cup and i got it in the mail I was like you know carrie was upset that the last 5k she ran to kind of give her generic medal it just said elite event it doesn't really have a logo on it i was like i'm going to give this to her if she earns it so i just sprung on her. i said you're running a 5k tonight she's like huh i said you're not running for time you're just running for distance and she's like no i said i got a surprise for you but you can't see it know what it is until you run it so she lo and behold she went out and did actually uh 5k 3.2 she actually went out and did three and a half so she did three and a half miles, and uh, she she got her um, here. I'll show it to you right here. What kind of surprise was she thinking it was? She thought it was like a coffee mug or something like that. Oh, okay. And, uh, and uh, she's like, I know it's going to be for you if it says your name on. It. I was like, it doesn't. And it says, "We'll run for coffee." There you go. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, it's <laughs> it dubs as a coaster has cork on now the is that, a, is that actually green because when you show it to it our logo is right over yeah it. it's it's green it's it's green on the front like starbucks but then it says it's blue and has the virtual racing logo on the back and so she was very excited to have that so now she has three medals i've done um you know i before covid i kind of went into the virtual race thing and the only virtual race i've actually done was the uh, military virtual race where i did 50 miles in one month and that mm -hmm. was to con co uh, that was um, a, a memorial for the Vietnam vets. And so um, that's why I did that one, and that was cool. That was the only virtual race I ever did. And I and I actually did it. I got the thing in the mail. I knew what it was. I didn't open it. I left it in my garage and I until Strava said I hit mile 50. And then, then I opened it up. And that was the month I got down to 207 pounds and then slowly came right back up to 218. But, yeah. But anyhow, we'll get back to the news now that we're back up and going. Oh, my God, did I? Oh, son of a bitch. Well, we're going to go back to the old trick of downloading the video and recording the audio because I forgot to hit uh, record on this bad boy. So I'm going to have to uh, edit in that whole conversation we've had since we've been back on. But that's all right. So we're going to go ahead and get started on the news. Uh, do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. News and shit. News and shit. Now here's Gordon with some news and shit. Joining us now from the Digital 410 West News Desk in Las Vegas, Nevada, Gordon Abernathy. Hey, Gordon, what's going on tonight? Well, you know, we were talking about Cobra Kai. Mm-hmm. And uh, the karate. Mm-hmm. And the wax on, wax off. And uh, the wash the windows. Well. Hold on, time out. Mm -hmm. Your buddy TJ Bowen said, I, got, I lucked out. My wife signed up for one of those races, but with COVID, it shut it down. What race did she sign up for, TJ? Because uh, my second Savage race was closed down by COVID. So they gave me a rain check, and um, it's going to be in November, no, February again, which was, uh, no, no, uh, November? Yeah, it's going to be in November. My first one I did was in November, and then I was going to do, my whole goal was to try to do two in one season. So I signed up for the one at the end of February, beginning of March, and that's when COVID hit. And so they canceled that one, and I got a free one coming up. Well, not free, but I collect my rain check in November. So instead of having two in Florida this season, now they're only going to have one. But, um, yeah, it would be interesting to see. Uh, did it very sweet of you. Maybe now she won't expect a minimum of coffee mug from you. Actually, you laugh. Uh, when I did my, thing of my, tur my Thanksgiving 5K, I was fifth place in my age group, and I want a pretty sweet uh, mug from that. Because when you do these elite events, everybody gets a medal if you finish. It's you can call it a participation medal if you want because everybody's out there running for the time anyhow. But if you get uh, top five in your age group, you get a, either a glass mug or, in this case, a ceramic mug. So I do have two mugs. I think my second or third 5K, I got uh, fourth place in my age group. And then on the turkey Thanksgiving one, I got fifth place. And actually, Carrie's first 5K, she got uh, fourth place in her age group. So she did win a mug on her first one. and then, uh, But that's the one where she got the generic medal. So now she has... A Thanksgiving medal and those two cool medals as well. But anyhow, back to the news. All right, back to the news. So we were talking again about uh, the Cobra Kai and this and that. Well, what's interesting is a Carson City boy 
He's 14 years old, is now the owner of a martial arts studio. How does that happen? Imagine being in middle school and being an owner of a martial arts studio. Did his dad die or something? Well, actually, a retiring owner of this uh, Carson City Martial Arts Studio Academy is handing over the keys of one of his students, who happens to be 14 years old. Uh, That's a great business decision. (laughs) Well, I'm sure uh, there was a lot of talk with the parents in the background and this and that. Yeah, but it doesn't mean his parents know the first fucking thing about running a business. That's why so many businesses run to the ground. Maybe they do. Yeah, maybe they do. So the Nevada Appeal reported Saturday that Sean Goodner, the longtime operator of the No Limits Martial Arts Academy, no, 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 I'm sorry, I can't talk, is giving his business to Maddox Sweet. That's a pretty badass name, actually. <laughs> Sweet, is, who is a uh, student at the Carson High School, will be running the school with the help from his mother. Sweet is already teaching children at the Martial Arts Academy. In addition, the current instructing staff is actually staying on. And Goodner said the team proved his expertise and earned the right to inherit the school. There are still good people out there. Isn't that awesome? That's absolutely. That is insane. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had a story about a, a hooker who absconded with like 90 K of some dude's money. Right. Yep. Well, yeah. And from Vegas, a woman is arrested for stealing nearly $1 million in items from a poker player. You must send me one million dollars. Go ahead. That was a bad uh, awesome power <laughs> reference. Yeah. They'll look so, at like one million dollars. I can cut you a check for that right now. I wish. Uh, yeah, right? A, man, a woman is accused of stealing a million dollars in items from a professional poker player in Las Vegas. Savan Savalana Silvia Silva. I'm sorry, Svetlana Silva. Svetlana. <laughs> Zetlana Silva, 46, was named in Las Vegas Police arrest, uh, Report involving stolen items from poker player Antonio Estevernardi. Uh, Silva, who was arrested on August 27th, I'm sorry, the 22nd on residential burglary and uh, stolen property charges after uh, this gentleman and his father reported the items missing from their home. Police say that the items included cash, poker chips, jewelry, and watches. Silva was arrested at the Aria Resort where the uh, police said they found poker chips along with large amounts of cash in her purse. Hmm. So uh, this 46-year-old is uh, scheduled up here. I assumed that she was a hooker, but I think that's what the original line uh, headlines read when I first read this earlier in the week, and that is not the case, So apparently. But either way, ladies are out to get the, the guy's stuff, you know, all their money. Now, we know in the news there's a whole lot of scuttlebutt, if you will, about mail-in ballots. And whether or not we should do mail-in voting. I got this in the mail from the, quote, Center of Voter Information. Dear Donald, county supervisors of elections across Florida encourage, all capital letters, everyone to use the mail-in ballots in the upcoming election. I have sent you the enclosed vote-by-mail ballot application already filled out with your name and address. Hmm. You can also request a ballot on your county supervisor's election website. I won't read the whole thing. The first line, once again, county supervisors of elections across Florida encourage everyone to use the mail-in ballot. Now, that's not what we've been hearing, right? But we know the whole mail-in ballot thing has become very political. Yeah, you're all doing more of an absentee in that state. Well, that's because we've had it around for years, and how it works is you actually have to send in yourself with your... All the information off your voter registration card. They do a background check. Make sure you live where you say you live. They fill out the information on that form. Send it back directly to you so that it can't be given to a neighbor and filled out and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But here's the reason I read this letter. Once again, county supervisors of election across Florida encourage everyone to use this mail-in ballot election. Now, call me cynical, Sam. But if, in fact, every supervisor of election across the Florida encourages everyone to use this, wouldn't they mail out this letter? But you say, Don, across the top, it says Center for Voter Information. Oh, well, you can print that out. if you look at the very, very bottom, this mailing has been paid for by the Center of Voter Information, quote, CVI. CVI is a non-government, non-profit, 501c4 organization. CVIE is not affiliated with the state or local elections office. Well, if you're not affiliated, then how do you know that every county supervisor of election across Florida wants 
And so because the whole mail-in ballot thing, I've never gotten one of these before. No third party has ever took it upon themselves to send me a form with all my information written out in it to get me to vote by mail until this thing became very political. And much like for those of you with websites, you'll get the domain name registrar of the United States in your mail, and it looks very legitimate seeing your domain name's expired and you need to pay them a bunch of money. It's bullshit. It's a scam. <laughs> Don't do it. But, yeah, I just got that in the mail. But speaking of politics, um, oh boy. no, this is a good thing. Um, because of COVID and um, part of the trying to um, bring equality, according to foxnews.com, a marijuana decriminalization vote expected in the House. 66% of Americans support legalizing marijuana, according to a Gallup poll. Scroll down past the ads. The Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement Act. You say, well, that's awfully long. Well, these are politicians, and as we talked before, politicians like to treat us like we're children. And you say, well, how, Don, how can they treat you like a children if they have the Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement Act? That's pretty long. No, they use those words because they wanted a cute an ac acronym. So it's the Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement Act, or otherwise known as MORE, because that's easy to remember. MORE would decriminalize marijuana by removing it from Controlled Substance Act, which, by the way, marijuana, according to the federal government, is a Scheduled One narcotic right next to heroin and crack. Um, the, act would, uh, the act would then free to pass their own law surrounding weed, which is already legal in 11 states and in Washington. So for those of you playing at home, Washington, D.C., all the politicians are at home smoking it up. But the uh, federal government still thinks it's a Schedule One narcotic, which it shouldn't be. I completely agree with the MORE Act. Um, a group of major civil rights and drug policy organizers sent a letter to the Democratic congressional leaders last month calling for the vote on a comprehensive modern marijuana reform. Quote, in the face of the evolving COVID-19 pandemic, and this work gets interesting, and the growing national dialogue on unjust law enforcement practices, which I agree, you shouldn't go to jail for fucking weed, marijuana reform is the modest first step at chipping away at the war on drugs and is more relevant and more pressing than ever before. I can agree with that. Coalition wrote, the MORE Act remains the most effective and equitable way to move forward. Move forward on what, you say? Well, according to the American Civil Liberties Union, reported earlier this year, Black Americans, have you noticed now that we have Black Lives Matter, we don't have to call them African Americans anymore? We're allowed going back to calling them black, which is cool. Black Americans are 3.64 times more likely than white Americans to be arrested for marijuana possession, despite the fact that they all use roughly the same rate, which is absolutely true. Uh, white people are definitely burning it down just as much as anybody else. If you don't believe me, go run around your neighborhood. Every third street, you'll smell it. Actually, somebody was burning one down in the parking lot of my shop yesterday, two days ago. I was walking back over to the 7-Eleven uh, and smelled uh, legalized mm -hmm. marijuana could also be a windfall for states and cities that have their sales tax revenues plunged during the COVID-19 pandemic, which is also true. For instance, Colorado, yada, yada, yada. We don't care about that. Uh, neither the Chamber of Commerce has ever passed a marijuana decriminalization bill. It has a good chance of getting through the House where Democrats have a majority of this, and some Republicans have voiced their support. But it will then have a much tougher time getting through the Senate due to the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Uh, yada yada yada. So that could be turned into a good thing. That yeah. Be... Can I uh, can I put on my tinfoil hat? By absolutely. Well, how do you keep a a society that has got a lot of unrest and a lot of uh, unemployment? How do you keep them calm? Tell them to fucking burn one down, man. Make it. You know, get get the food coming. Right. Got the food coming. Keep them fed. Hey, but... and keep them inebriated. But hey, man, we've been saying for years that it's insane that people are getting going to jail yes, for fucking having a absolutely. goddamn plant in their car. I mean, it's... And thank God, through the use of federalism, states like California and Colorado and Nevada, Nevada. where you live, have said, hey, we're not going to enforce the Schedule One narcotic federal laws. We're not going to arrest anybody. Furthermore, we're going to go even further and medical it and then decriminalize it. And you know things are turning around when Florida finally starts jumping on board. Florida now has medical marijuana. You can get your cards and go out and get it. And like I said, you smell it everywhere. And so it's just archaic and dumb. This, this shit goes back to the 50s when they're doing this fucking paranoia propaganda bullshit. And it's but the interesting thing about it is because it's federally illegal, it is a cash business. Banks will not touch that money. Well, 
I heard originally they wouldn't because the FDIC threatened to pull their insurance. And so what happened, at least, and I may be wrong on this, but when I was watching a show about it, the main, uh, they're having a problem with all these guys who own these um, stores. They're like stashing cash all over town because they don't know where the fuck to put it. Yeah, like the world's richest drug dealer. Yeah, so their friends all have like stacks and stacks of cash in their house. And then finally like four or five of these guys got together. So let's start our own fucking bank. Yeah, like and, a co-op bank. And so they were going to do that, and then, then the other banks were, well, wait a minute. And, and so I think at that point, when they threatened to, to actually start their own bank, to that might actually start chipping away at some of these other banks' profits, they, I think yeah. they finally started to allow them to do so. I may be wrong, but last I heard that they, they finally got scared and said, think, okay, you guys can do it. I think it's state to state at this point. But uh, yeah. hey, real quick, you know something we need to focus on more uh, in these times is U.S. Marshals uh, said they found – 39, yes. listen to the number again, 39 missing children in Georgia during a two-week operation. And you're not hearing about this shit anywhere. The only place I became aware of this story was on Facebook. Someone had posted a meme saying 39 kids were found on a trail in Georgia and no one's talking about it. And so here, Except we're talking CBS about it. And well, CBS News. Well, they're talking about their website, but I think their point is you're not seeing it too much on the main channels on, on TV. So U.S. Marshal Service found 39 missing children in Georgia over two weeks in a gross. mission known as Operation Not Forgotten. Uh, the agency announced in a press release uh, just this last Thursday, the operation led to the rescue of 26 children and the safe location of 13 others. So uh, these missing children were considered to be some of the most at-risk and challenging recovery cases in the area. This is based on indications of high-risk factors such as victimization of child sex trafficking, child explo uh, exploitation, sexual abuse, physical abuse, and medical or mental health conditions, according oh, so to press release. At other children, yeah, this is just sickening. The Can we just kill these assholes? The people they pulled out of this fucking trailer, do we really need due process? I mean, I understand the purpose of due process, but when you get found in a house of 39 missing fucking kids... Can we just have an accidental misfire on these guys? And gal, Some I think there's a chick in there too. Yeah, it's uh, needless to say, uh, it's good that they've found these children. Um, we need to focus more on this stuff, you know, not to sound like I'm backing up what happened up in Wisconsin, but when a couple of these guys who were uh, yeah, the, the, from this planet, uh, bad people, that could fall right in line with this. Yeah, we didn't want to get into it on this show, but for you guys, OG5, or you want to join, we did probably a good 40 minutes on the uh, shooting in Wisconsin and uh, the video breakdown. And on that note, um, CNN. A person was shot and killed in downtown Portland Saturday night after the evening yes. of violent clashes between Trump supporters and protesters denouncing police brutality. Can Let's we not stop call it right there. Which Antifa? side? Which was the victim? What victim? Well, what this side is was the one. Well, because we're fair and balanced here, I'm reading from CNN. And so you notice they, they, they said Trump supporters versus, versus protesters of uh, denouncing police brutality. They didn't call them Antifa, heaven forbid. Um, police have not released details about the victim, uh, who they said was shot in the chest around 846. Should have been wearing a plate carrier. Uh, Saturday near Southwest 3rd Avenue and Southwest Alder Street. P previously, police said the shooting was near Southeast and 3rd Avenue. Authorities also have not provided any suspect information and are asking anyone witnessing the incident, which I'm sure there's 38 videos of it on YouTube already, who has firsthand video of the shooting to contact investigators. Justin Dunlop, who witnessed the shooting and captured some of it on his Facebook live stream, said he didn't hear much uh, that led up to it, i.e. he didn't hear the confrontation that led up to it. I heard three uh, seconds of yelling and I saw a guy spray a bear mace, Dunlop told CNN. Uh, the victim sprayed bear mace and launched it right into the other guy. Um, did it, CNN has not confirmed if the victim is the person who sprayed the mace. Uh, for more than 90 consecutive nights, protesters, yada, yada, yada. The man who was killed in Portland on Saturday was wearing a hat with the insignia of the pa uh, Patriot Prayer, a far-right group based in Portland that has clashed with protesters in the past, said New York Times reporter Mike Baker. Earlier Saturday night, police tweeted that the, there had been quote, some instance of violence between demonstrators and counter-protesters when a politically, uh, political rally caravan through downtown Portland. Long story short, like 
six trucks, six, 12, well, a bunch of trucks with Trump flags and Trump supporters went driving through Portland and one of them ended up getting shot. So basically someone got shot for uh, running his mouth and supporting Trump. So that's always fun. It's getting crazy, man. Got to be careful. Things are going to get even worse. And Gordon and I said this on the OG5 podcast talking about that shit in Wisconsin. We said, you know, Antifa's using this as a perfect reason to start arming themselves and they go out through these protests. It's going to get, get nutty. Go ahead with your next story, Gordon. And you lost your audio. Yep, your audio's dropped out. I can't hear you. Hello, your audio's dropped out. Anyhow, that's going to wrap it up. Gordon's audio's dropped out. I have no idea what happened. And that's weird. Um, this is going to wrap it up for this episode of the What's Your Head podcast. I did hear him say very lightly he has no other stories, right? No more stories. Yeah, I, I have you cranked. I can barely hear you. You have no more stories. But that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the What's In Your Head podcast. I did make another change to the page. If you go there and click on the social page, you'll have links to Gordon's Twitter page, links to Gordon's Facebook account as well as all mine, including my TikTok. Thank you guys so much. And uh, head on over to D-410 and download the show. You can also download it on Google Podcast, I, um, Apple Podcast, Stitcher, Spotify, and any place fine podcasts are found. We will talk to you all next week. And remember, if you don't get out of your comfort zone, you'll never get out of bed. So thank you guys so much, and we will see you next week. This has been a Digital 410 production. <laughs>